So what's the first part you remember acting? Or what was the first moment that you felt like maybe this is something I want to do? I never thought of, thought of it like that. I never mm -hmm. thought of it like this is something I want to do. It has always been something I was doing without even thinking about it. And I remember I was at school and I remember on Thursdays we were going to church every, every Thursday morning. And I remember doing Jesus. <laughs> wow. I remember that. I was very small. I was like five years old, four, five years old. I love what were you wearing? I don't remember. <laughs> I really don't remember. Why is Jesus? Did you have a crown of thorns or what? No, I guess it was simple, like kind of a white sheet over, you know, mm -hmm. something like that, something very simple. And I was in a school that was really promoting creativity. And we were, you know, we were always creating things, always making music or with my friends or, you know, studying videos and trying to understand choreographies and to, you know, we're always creating something. So I've never been in the quest of becoming an actor or a singer or, or a creator. I felt, I felt like it has always been something I was doing that was always there. That was something that was necessary for me to, exp you know, to express things and to, yeah. It's great. Yeah. And tell me again about how you view acting like as an empty vessel that you fill with the part. I, f I feel like to create, you have to be a vessel. You have to be someone who's who studied yourself a little bit so that you can eventually understand when your ego is taking too much space in the process so that you can be clear and the clearest you are the most uh, present you can be and acting is about presence really about presence either theater or in the movies or it's always about now and about how it's never about reproducing the now it's always about creating through the moment and breathing through the moment I feel I don't always succeed in that I'm not always very present sometimes I you know I have the ego rushing back but it's a struggle that is important to evolve when's your birthday out of curiosity December 5th 1985. December 5th. Oh. Yeah. So Sagittarius. Mm -hmm. What are the other signs? Do you know? Yeah, but I'm not. But yeah, Gemini. But I'm not. I'm not Gemini at Gemini all. Gemini ascendant. Yeah. Me too. You too. Yeah. What's your sign? Your Libra. First? Libra. Libra. Moon in Scorpio. Gemini. Oh wow. Okay. What's your moon? I don't know. That's the easiest one. Yeah. So what's been the biggest challenge so far? And what's been the best part you ever had? And what part do you dream to have? Mm, the challenge, I think, it's um, struggling with um, the, ima the, the image that reflects out of yourself and that is not really you. And that is not really, I'm going to get clear with that. I mean, politically, people see you as a subject, a political subject of either that or this. And when they create a story, they create a story that sometimes, that sometimes is not helping the world. That sometimes is telling the same story all over again that, that promotes stereotypes and that, and that doesn't bring um, peace between, you know, some kind of... And I, I don't want to do that. I, I, I never felt like I wanted to do that. I was interested in that. Mm -hmm. Whatever project it was. And Typecast. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I really don't dream anymore. I used to be a big dreamer. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the more it goes, the m more grounded I get. So I feel like it's reality. I'm working with what's here and not what's going to be here. So I'm not dreaming about a part. I'm more passionate about people who are writing with, 
you know, such strength, like torrent, like, you know, I'm passionate about that. And people with visions, people with, you know, a clear um, vision of the world, of, of our situation as human beings in the world, and how art can eventually help in who any is, kind of way. Who are some of your favorite directors? David Lynch. Have you ever met him? No. No, I know people who work with him, but mm -hmm. I've never met him. Do you meditate? I do. Yeah. So it's to be. Yeah. Who else? Who else? I really like uh, Steve McQueen. Mm -hmm. The new one. Yeah. No, of course. Yeah. He's great. He's amazing. amazing. Yeah. The movie Hunger is, was such a shock for me. And, yeah. yeah, for everybody probably. And yeah. imagine yeah. acting that part. Yeah. Yeah. That's a strong, for example, that's a strong kind of part I love to do, like challenging and, and, and political and, and telling a story about freedom, real freedom, the quest of, you know, freedom of everything, of the ego, of the world, of the political shit, of the conflicts of yourself and the others and, and yeah beautiful beautiful director and beautiful actor Fassbinder and yeah the other Fassbinder the director he's not here anymore but yeah I would have loved to work with him that would have been tough to know because he Maybe. was I mean I when I was a designer I thought oh, I want to meet him I want to do the costumes for yeah. his films and yeah he's, he's incredible yeah. and prolific how many films he, he died at, what, the age of 36? Yeah, very young. Having made 36 films, something like yeah, that. Yeah, crazy. And theater, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, he had that theater company. Yeah. So do you spend much time in, uh, acting in the theater? No. Mostly at cinema. Yeah, mostly movies. Yeah, I directed in theater, and I'll, I'll, I'll continue doing that. And I want to direct to in the movies. So I'm slowly, you know, converting into behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, because you made a little uh, behind film. Behind the scenes, but behind. Yeah. Yeah. And also you have that project. You sent the project. Kind of about a workshop, in a way. Yeah. To help people. You want to talk about it? Yeah. Um, this project is not mine. I feel it's a project that is necessary for for people who think it is. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's uh, creating a space where people can just learn about themselves and for an hour or two um, allow a certain creative identity to happen to them. Mm -hmm. And that process should be done together because alone we're, we're not as creative as we could be. We're not as uh, strong as we could be. Mm -hmm. And together we learn more about the world and about how we react to the world because it's all a question of how you react to things and you can either choose to be violent or to understand the other and there's always a way to understand the other because when you don't understand the other is that you don't understand yourself through what you don't understand in the other so I feel it's you know the world's going fast there's a lot of bullshit and I feel like we're losing some kind of presence Mm -hmm. and some kind of consciousness about ourselves first and people want you know they you know they want that they want that they want to do the revolution they want you know nothing's going right but they don't look inside they never ever look inside and see what's the problem inside they always focus on the outside it's very superficial so they always criticize about this is not going right so let's do a revolution but it's not going to change you know pl pl replacing a system by another one, it's still a system. It's not going to solve anything. It's all inside. It's all in you. So that's the kind of work I want to. And that project is 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 is, is a lot. It's going to be you know in my life. It's like it's it's going to start now. I'm going to you know build it now, and and I hope it's going to last like for my whole life. And I hope it's going to be something that. Um, gonna reunite people from all over the world because I travel a lot and at some point I'd like to have you know people from India, America, US, Israel, Palestine, 
the Gulf, you know, Middle East, uh, North Africa, Mexico, and all work together. And just understand through, through the work that we're really all the same. In our differences, we're the same. <laughs> and now you're based in New York. Yeah, I'm based in New York. Living in Harlem. In Harlem, up in the hood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Harlem How was, is, yeah. How was adjusting to that? Easy, I love New York. I've been loving New York forever. I've been going to New York for 10 years now, back and forth, for four years, very much. And I've been a nomad for eight years of my life. And I decided not to be anymore, because it's a bit, you know, tiring at some point. And you need to have a base in order to just settle a little bit with yourself. And I felt like New York was the best place for me to move, even though New York is not New York anymore. It's still New York. So, in a way, you still have the possibility to meet, you know, people from all over the world, like, really, from all over the world, and to, to be a part of a dynamic situation, if you wanted to. So, when you said you were a nomad for eight years, yeah. you had no apartment, yeah. you just left your stuff where? I, I tried to have little stuff with me. So yeah. my computer, my camera, a few clothes, and the rest was at my parents' house in Belgium. Yeah. So it's freedom, no? It is. It is freedom in a way, but freedom is inside. Freedom could be anything. Mm -hmm. Could be now, like now it could be freedom. But yeah, I, gu I guess it helps uh, getting rid of things. Yeah. I guess it helps. But um, in everything, there's um, an illusion. And there's an illusion also in, in thinking that you're free by not having much. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. So you're here until Sunday or Monday. Yeah. And then back to New York or where? Back to Belgium. Oh, back to Belgium. Then That's why you didn't have to make a reservation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then to Rome. What are you doing in Rome? You're going to be in Zoolander. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you don't know it's it. going till the end of June. I think they're yeah. filming. Oh, yeah. Wow. Still filming. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm gonna. I, I did a, an Italian film two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm going. It's, it's going to be there. Like it's going to be released June 4th. And they asked me to come to promote it. Great. What's it called? Una storia sbagliata. The wrong story. And who directed it? Gianluca Maria Tavarelli. <laughs> and what's your part? It's a beautiful part. I play an Iraqi. It takes place in Iraq. Who's gonna help an Italian girl whose husband died in an explosion? Like, you know, he he was a soldier, and um, and she's coming to understand the situation and to understand how he died. And she will never have any answers to. It all the questions he has. Through um, the friendship she, she will build with him, she will understand uh, about life and death. So it's, it's a story of, of the West and the East meeting through that quest of life. So it's a beautiful script. I haven't seen the movie, so I don't know, but the script was really, mm. really beautiful. And it's in Italian? Yeah. You speak Italian? Yeah. <laughs> How many languages do you speak? Five. Fine. Yeah, yeah. So, so English, so far. French, Italian, Arabic, Spanish, and a little bit of Dutch, because we learn back in Belgium we learn, you know, learn Dutch. So I kind of understand it, and I could, you know, I could improve it if I want, if I wanted to. But I want to learn more languages. Wow, that's yeah. great. Yeah. You can work at the UN. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to. Why not? Yeah. So. Um, I'm losing my train of thought. Where in Belgium? Liège. Yes, I was born in Liège. Oh, Liège, where the... Did you know who Jean-Paul Espinier is? No. Mm. He's your biggest designer from Liège. Oh, okay. Living in Brussels now. Liège. Yes. Liège is, isn't it where there was porcelain and stuff? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Cristal, also. Yeah, ah, Cristal. Oh, okay. And is there anywhere you haven't been you'd really like to be? Everywhere. 
South America. I'm very obsessed with South America. I felt like Buenos Aires suddenly. I don't know why. Like where? Buenos Aires, Argentina. Oh no, I'm not. I'm not a fan. I've been there. I'm yeah. not a fan of the energy. No. Really? Yeah. I've never been. Yeah. No, I, I, I've been there. It was interesting to witness, but I don't like their. They're really dividing themselves from the other Latinos, and they really think high of themselves. And I don't like that kind of energy. I don't mm -hmm. like that. So no, I would think any other country. <laughs> Where? Mm -hmm. Peru, ah. Colombia, Ecuador, Costa Rica, I don't know, Chile, Venezuela, Uruguay, yeah, Brazil. Yeah. So after Rome, what comes next? Maybe Peru. Really? Yeah. So you're just a free spirit right yeah. now? Yeah. Great. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. That's new though. Yeah. I went to Mexico on an on a, um, introspective trip and yeah. I realized that your heart is your freedom. And when you listen to yourself, you're more clear. Mm -hmm. And you're kind of more, I don't like the word happy, but kind of more... Why? You're in France, so you can't use it. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna uh, throw the stones at me. No, but you're kind of more present, like stronger. You feel stronger mm -hmm. when you listen to yourself, to your heart, like with no conditions, with no. There's the money. Oh, I need to. Get, yeah, I need to live. You know, so I need to work. So I need to. Have. No, it doesn't exist. It's all a creation. It's all a construction. You can decide how you want to live. So. Once you have that clear set of mind, you can go anywhere. Everything's possible. Everything's possible. It really is. The hard work is to remember it every single day. Every single morning, washing your heart from fear.